such a pleasure to be with you uh, this morning, especially some of you who may be visiting today. Um, we're thrilled anytime we have new folks to Central Reform Church. Turn with me now to page 787 in your Pew Bible, or you can look up Matthew chapter 6 on your iPhone or your tablet. Uh, we are going to be reading verses 5 through 15. Matthew 6, 5 through 15. Listen now for the word of God. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a humorous story about a Republican and a Democratic candidate for office who were at a town hall meeting. And they were in the midst of a pretty heated debate and the subject of religion bubbled up. And the Republican candidate said to the Democrat, you know what, I'll bet you you don't even know the the words to the Lord's Prayer. I'll bet 20 bucks on it. And the Democrat said, I'll take that bet. I know the words to the Lord's Prayer. Of course I know the words to the Lord's Prayer. Great, the Republican said, let's hear it. The Democrat cleared his throat. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And the Republican looked at the Democrat and was just stunned. And then he grabbed his billfold and handed him a $20 bill and said, I can't believe you actually knew the Lord's Prayer. (laughs) And that's an old joke that's gotten many, many miles. But I think it serves as an illustration that we are challenged, aren't we? As folks, not just to remember the words of this prayer, but if we do remember the words, are we able to comprehend their meaning? Now, this is especially true when we get to the part of the Lord's Prayer that says, May your kingdom come. May your kingdom come. Now, we use the King's English at Central Reformed every Sunday, don't we? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. It would have been the Queen's English, but now it is the King's English, and we say, Thy kingdom come every week. And and when we get to this part of the prayer, we're making a decision, aren't we? We are choosing that not my kingdom come, but Thy kingdom come, not my will be done, but thy will be done. And then later, the early church added at the end of this prayer, for thine is the kingdom, not mine. Thine is the power and the glory, not mine. But let's back up one week to last Sunday when we opened this Lord's Prayer sermon series. Basically, what we talked about is that Jesus loves us so much So much that he gave us words for conversation with God. You can talk to God. And you can pray to God in heaven. 
And more than that, as I highlighted Psalm 66, verse 20, God wants to hear from us. God longs to hear from God's children. God longs so much to hear from us that God will never turn a deaf ear towards us or withhold God's steadfast love from us. What we have in the Lord's Prayer is a vision for a life that is lived faithfully in the already but not yet kingdom. This is more than just a, a, a vision. It's, it's expressing the hunger and the pain and the injustice and the evil in our world. And it calls out for transformation, both within ourselves and within others. The men of Central will begin uh, a study on the Lord's Prayer this Thursday. And we're going to be reading Adam Hamilton's book, The Lord's Prayer. It's an excellent book. And uh, some of you guys who are still thinking about uh, joining this group, there's time. I encourage you to do it. Uh, What Adam Hamilton reminds us is that when we pray, we are fixing our hearts on what we pray. We are training our hearts to think less of ourselves, what we want, hollowing our names, our little kingdoms, and our power, and our glory. And in prayer, we yield all of these things to God. We pray not my or mine, but thy and thine. And isn't it interesting that the first word most of our children will learn when they're children, (laughs) little ones, is mine. And I I watched this with my own kids. I watched this play out where where we would be at a music class or maybe they were in a nursery school or something and, and, and they'd take a toy from another child and say, mine. That's mine. And, and this seems to be how we're wired from birth. And while it, we become a little bit more subtle as we age, we continue to struggle with the my and mine syndrome. Adam Hamilton says that the Lord's Prayer is an antidote for this soul disease. We pray, thy kingdom come, because at that point we are making a decision that we know we want to see things change within and without. The kingdom, of course, was the focus of Jesus' teaching. He mentions the word kingdom at least 100 times in all of his sermons and teachings. And he uses that word as a metaphor, constructing a new symbolic universe that blesses a radical way of living with God. And more than that, such a kingdom is inclusive. Those who are out are in, and those who are in are out. He takes all of the theology of Deuteronomy and flips it on its head. And he says, you have heard it said, but I tell you, this is how the kingdom of God is. And it's the kind of kingdom where God rules, where diseases are cured, and where death is overcome. That kind of kingdom. Now people in the first century who were listening to Jesus teach, they knew exactly what it was like to live under a king's rule or an emperor's rule. The authority was to be respected. The kingdom's rules adhered to. And the king himself exalted and honored above all people. And then people would bow. They'd curtsy. Prostrate themselves before these magnificent rulers because they had authority over their lives. Now, there were some benevolent kings and queens that uh, tried to live and rule with mercy and to serve the common good. But sadly, many of those rulers are found only in fairy tales. Now, we believe that God is the ruler and the king of the universe and that all of space is God's. And if you saw the other night when Jupiter and Venus were very close, even that space is God's. And beyond, to the galaxies beyond that, 
and to the galaxies beyond that and to all of the suns that are out there. It's all God's and God rules it all. Even so, we pray your kingdom come. Your will be done. We pray for this because we know humanity has a checkered past. We have a long history of messing things up. And we turn into Genesis, the chapter 3. Adam and Eve turned from God's will by eating forbidden fruit. And then moments later, it would seem, Cain slaughters his brother Abel. And then a couple of chapters later, the earth is so full of violence that God, God really grieves even making humans. And that's just the first six chapters of Genesis. So when we pray, thy kingdom come, Jesus means it in that we pray for the opposite of a cruel reign, the cruel reign of earthly kings. We pray thy kingdom come, disciples of Jesus are praying for the reign of God, which comes with justice and freedom and love, the very opposite to the cruel and oppressive leaders that we see today and we read about in books. To pray thy kingdom come is to pray for the transformation of the world. Thy kingdom come is a statement of faith. And there isn't a person in this room or with us online who doesn't want to see humanity become everything that God intended it to be. Breaking the strongholds of sin, oppression, and despair. Not all will remain as it is, for God's kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. And it will bring change and transformation. And that's the good news. The good news is that the kingdom is already among us. Just not fully present. It's always been with us. It's always been with us as long as there are people who love God and seek to do God's will. Author John Stroman uses the example of electricity. He says it's always been here. We didn't invent it. We discovered it. It, was, it took Ben Franklin and his kite to create an interest in it. And then it took Thomas Edison's ingenuity to bring electricity to us. And so Stroman writes, Jesus brought the kingdom close to us, closer to us than ever before, as close as flesh and blood. He demonstrated the kingdom of God in human life and encounter. It has always been here. But we have become victims of the kingdom of darkness and despair, so much so that we have missed the meaning and hope offered by the kingdom of God. Now some of you in this room, you know the name Martin Niemöller. He's a German Lutheran pastor who led the resistance church movement against Adolf Hitler and Nazism in Germany prior to and during World War II. And after the war, he, he was asked why the German people turned to Nazism. And he replied that the Germans wanted something to bring their broken lives together, to provide coherence, meaning, and goals. He said that life was broken at loose ends and fragmented. Hunger and poverty were rampant. The German people were in disgrace after the defeat of World War I and Hitler offered them hope. Nazism brought the German people together and Niemöller says it was an all-inclusive philosophy of life. For a while it seemed to be the answer to the unifying and rebuilding of Germany but it was a false totalitarianism. It let them all down. Niemöller said this. He said, they were seeking the kingdom of God and they didn't even know it. He said they mistook Nazism for the real thing. And since our basic human need is to belong, disillusionment will come if we fail to seek God's will as God's people. Now we know we must pray thy kingdom come. We know not all is right with the world. We know that things happen and evil is among us. 
How many mass shootings have already taken place in our country? Just this year alone, we pray thy kingdom come. When we see a South Carolina lawyer convicted for viciously murdering his wife and his 22-year-old son, we pray thy kingdom come. When we know that women and children, men and boys, are all being trafficked for sex all around the world, we pray thy kingdom come. In the last century alone, 100 million people died as a result of war. Millions more died from starvation and malnutrition-related diseases. We pray thy kingdom come. What about racism? It permeates everything. It affects us all. Then there's our own struggles of pride, indifference, materialism, deceitfulness, addiction. We pray thy kingdom come. And beneath all of this is often idolatry. Idolatry, which is allowing something else to sit on the throne of our heart and life instead of our true God, the ruler of the cosmos. But Jesus tells us often in the Gospels, don't lose heart, believe, believe in me, trust in me, put the full weight of your faith into my life and I will save you. I will be with you always. So that when you do pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you will be able to walk and talk like people who are on their way to the kingdom. We're going to pray the Lord's Prayer in a few moments after communion. And when we get to the part where we pray, Thy kingdom come, let's pray it like we mean it, as the people of God. Let us pray. Our gracious God in heaven, we give thanks for this day and its beauty and for the challenge of this sermon and the words that we've heard. We ask you, God, to send your spirit upon us in a powerful way that the words we have heard may, through your grace, be so grafted within our hearts that they would bring forth in us the fruits of your Holy Spirit to the honor and praise of your most glorious name through Jesus Christ our Lord and all God's people say, Amen.